Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how root hair cells are adapted for the absorption of water and minerals. You should then be able to describe how water passes through the roots to the xylem, including the symplast and apoplast pathways. Ok, I'm showing you here the root growing from a seedling. As you can see, these roots are covered with very fine root hairs. Root hairs grow from cells in the epidermis of the root, in other words the outer layer, and we can see that under the microscope. Now water moves into the root hair by osmosis, and root hair cells are adapted so that osmosis takes place rapidly. Firstly, the densely packed root hairs massively increase the surface area to volume ratio of the root. Secondly, the surface of the root hair consists only of the cell wall and the cell membrane. This makes the surface extremely thin, increasing the rate of osmosis. Finally, the root hair cells use another mechanism to increase the rate of osmosis. The water in the soil contains dissolved mineral ions, for example magnesium, which plants use to make chlorophyll. However, the concentration of these mineral ions is lower in the soil than in the root hair. So root hair cells use active transport to move these mineral ions into the cell. The root hair cell also contains other dissolved compounds such as sugars. So because of this, the water potential inside the root hair cell is lower than in the soil. So water now moves into the root hair cell by osmosis down the water potential gradient. Now the water must move from the root hair cells through the root cortex to the xylem. Water can move through the cortex by two pathways. In the symplast pathway, water moves from the cytoplasm of one cell to the cytoplasm of an adjacent cell. To do this, the water moves through the plasma desmata linking the cells. Remember that plasma desmata are microscopic channels through the cell wall connecting the cytoplasm of cells. The symplast pathway is driven by the water potential gradient between the root hair cells and the xylem. Water continually moves into the root hair cells by osmosis from the soil. This makes the water potential of the root hair cells greater than the cortex cells. In the xylem, the water potential is relatively low. So water moves by osmosis across the cortex down the water potential gradient. Now I should point out that the symplast pathway is relatively slow. That's because the pathway for water in the cytoplasm is obstructed by the organelles. Water can also move by the apoplast pathway. In this case, water moves within the cell walls and the spaces between the cells. The cellulose cell walls have a relatively open structure allowing water to move easily between the cellulose fibres. Remember that water molecules are attracted to each other, and scientists call this attraction cohesion. This is due to the fact that water molecules can form hydrogen bonds to each other. As water moves into the xylem and is carried away, more water moves along the apoplast pathway due to cohesion. The apoplast pathway offers much less resistance to water flow than the symplast pathway. Now before the water can pass into the xylem, it must pass through a layer of cells called the endodermis. The cells in the endodermis have an unusual feature. A band of waterproof material called suberin runs around the cell wall, and scientists call this band the Casparian strip. Because of the Casparian strip, water can no longer move through the apoplast pathway. Instead, the water now passes through the cell membrane and into the cytoplasm, becoming part of the symplast pathway. By forcing all water through the cytoplasm, this allows the cell membrane to control which substances can enter the xylem. Now, cells in the endodermis use active transport to pump mineral ions into the xylem. This lowers the water potential of the xylem triggering water to move into the xylem vessels by osmosis, and scientists call this effect root pressure. Now you need to remember that root pressure is an active process requiring respiration. If we inhibit respiration, 
by using a metabolic poison such as cyanide, then root pressure stops. Root pressure also stops if we prevent aerobic respiration by excluding oxygen. In the next video, we're going to look at transpiration.